This talk is, um, is uh, dedicated to John Conway and also to Martin Gardner, particularly for his story, The No-Sided Professor. Uh, let me begin by uh, showing you uh, uh, a crossing of a knot, and I have reversed the crossing, and I've also smoothed the crossing, where I've taken it out and connected the lines in the other way, and I've illustrated on this slide um, the, the, that operation on, uh, on a trefoil knot on the left, and then one of the crossings is switched in the middle uh, knot, which makes it unknotted, and one of the crossings is smooth, making it into a simple link like that. Um, this, is, um, um, uh, th this relationship between these three knots was uh, understood to be absolutely fundamental, the knot theory by John Conway, who uh, showed that you could uh, define a version of the Alexander polynomial by uh, relating these three entities. And when I draw these, it means some knot, just as we had previously, and then some knot that's obtained by switching it, or some knot that's obtained, link that's obtained by smoothing it. Those three entities are related uh, in that there is a polynomial invariant, so that the polynomial obliquet minus the polynomial for the reversed one is equal to z, the polynomial variable, times the polynomial for the smoothed one. Um, and this skein identity is almost all you need in order to compute this invariant, which is uh, um, amazing uh, because um, previous definitions of the Alexander polynomial going all the way back to the 1920s involved quite a bit more complicated things than just the diagrams. So you have the following complete description of this invariant. Every knot gets a polynomial associated with it. Topologically equivalent knots get the same polynomial. If you have an unknot, you get one. And otherwise, the uh, invariants are related according to the skein relation. And um, another way of thinking about this, and I'm showing you a computation at the same time, is to, uh, is to think of the knot with the positive crossing as a kind of composition of the one with the switched crossing and the one with the smooth crossing. So you can write a big plus between them. And that plus, of course, is not commutative and not associative, but it allows you to recursively decompose the knot into smaller and smaller pieces until it's been decomposed by means of the formalism into unknots and unlinks, as I have done with the trefoil here. And then the polynomial assigns to a big plus uh, the polynomial plus z times the polynomial to the one on the right. And so you just take it and move it over, and you end up getting a polynomial. Um, this was the original scheme. Some years later, it turned out that there were other polynomials you could associate, but the skein, which lies in back of it, this, this way of thinking of the knot as a kind of a composition of unknots and unlinks, is fundamental to all of these things and very mysterious. And I'm going to show you some. Uh, problems that I'm interested in about that. So the problem that I'm interested in is slice knots. Um, and this is where we get to the fourth dimension and the Martin Gardner story. Um, because you see, a knot is said to be sliced if it bounds a smooth disk in the four ball. So um, that means that we're thinking of three-dimensional space as the boundary of four-dimensional space, and the knot may bound something simple in four-dimensional space, even though it doesn't bound anything simple in three-dimensional space. Um, if this seems a little strange, think of uh, this room as the three-dimensional space, and imagine spinning the room around its boundary to create a four-dimensional space. And you will spin it around its boundary until there's a mirror image copy on the other side as though you turned it by 180 degrees, the entire room, out through four space and back. And if you took a knot which was attached to the ceiling and the floor and you watched what happened to that as, as the room spun, then the knot would form a curve which, uh, which moved around like that and would form a disk in four space. So I'll give you a three-dimensional illustration of that. Here is a knot, trefoil knot, and it's been rotated up into four space and back down into three space and turned into its mirror image. And what you see in the lower part of the slide is all the connecting lines that go from one knot to the other knot, forming a disk which is projected into three space, and the projected disk in three space, uh, of course, is intersecting itself. But these intersections 
are like this. A bit of surface is going through another bit of surface like that. And when it meets, when it comes up to that other bit of surface, it jumps into force space and comes back on the other side. Uh, the reason I say that this is uh, related to the no-sided professor is because that story is about an argument between uh, two mathematicians, uh, Robert Simpson and uh, Vladislaw uh, Slapernowski. And uh, they get into an argument and Slapernowski grabs Simpson and twists him into some form of a pretzel and it turns out that it sends him into four space. And then uh, Slapernowski gets quite uh, upset and follows him into four space and the story goes on. In any case, a knot can bound a disk in four space, particularly a knot connected up with its mirror image always bounds a disk in four space. Um, another way to think about these surfaces in four space is to think of taking the, taking the knot in three space and watching it move in time and go through saddle points and deaths and births. Um, and so here's another example of, um, of slicing somebody. Um, here's a stevedore's knot on the left, and I've shown you a slicing disc on the right. If you were to deform the stevedore into the one on the right at the top of the slide, but it forms a disc. Huh? One minute. Uh, it forms a disc. Um, on the other hand, you can move the knot, twist it, and push it through itself. It goes through a saddle, and then there are two uh, disjoint curves, and they come apart, and so the whole thing forms a disc in four space. Now, here's the th here's the relationship. If you calculate this, just do it directly by a skein calculation, you will find that, you, that, uh, that the Conway polynomial, if you use the variable z as t minus t inverse, ends up being in the form f of t times f of t inverse. In this case, t minus 2t inverse times t inverse minus 2t. And this is always true, but I don't know a skein theoretic proof of it. I know a more geometric topological proof of this basic theorem of Fox and Milner. I would like a skein theoretic proof of it, and I, I really would like a skein theoretic proof of it because it would be very nice to try to generalize this theorem, uh, and it would also be great to understand it on the basis of the skein. Everything is in the skein, uh, but some things are hidden. I've given you another illustration here where the polynomial turned out to be minus 2t inverse plus 3t, the, and the product with it, the other one, gives the Conway polynomial. Uh, and that brings us to 11, because 2 times 3 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 11.